Greetings, yet another video about inflation because that is the hottest topic in the world right now. Now one of the things that confuses people about inflation is this annual metric versus any time horizon longer or shorter than that. The headline media likes to scare people with headlines of US CPI rising 7.8% over the last year with no recognition of what the annualized growth rate was for a longer period of time, which is more valid, but nowadays even for a shorter period of time, which is also indicative of moderating. The Federal Reserve said inflation was transitory. Now, when they are right, they are, of course, right only by accident, but that was, in fact, correct. Now, as longtime viewers of this channel know, my favorite inflation measurement is the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index because it is number one worldwide, Number two, full of freely traded components such as oil, natural gas, gold, silver, etc. So it cannot be rigged. The entire narrative that inflation statistics are suppressed by the government is invalidated by those two points. The U.S. is not the only country in the world and commodities are freely traded and therefore a bundle of commodities is the most valid index. And the third point, which is more sophisticated, is that commodity inflation is the more pernicious and damaging type of inflation. Service price inflation less so because that's simultaneous with wage increases, so the picture there is relatively more unclear. But commodity prices rising versus falling is more directly correlated with whether things are going well for a consumer or not. So the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index has a 10-year compound annual growth rate of minus 0.29%. Minus 0.29% well below zero. This is in deflation and often is because that is what the technonomic medium of the world, the atom, requires that more and more money be printed yet commodity prices go further down. However, if you look at other time horizons, we can select those from the choices over here. On a one-year basis, it's up 7.62%. You can also take quarter to date and even month to date numbers, shorter term numbers, to see what the growth rate was on an annualized basis. Now the Bureau of Labor Statistics website does not let us do that for the CPI. So let's go over there and examine this in more detail. So this is the bls.gov website and this is the CPI. And we see this every month in my inflation watch videos. But among the windows of inflation data that exist as selectable options in this website, are one month horizons, as you can see over here, two month horizon, three month horizon, six month horizon, and 12 month horizon. Now, how do you calculate the annual growth rate from all of these? And does that reveal some worthwhile insight? Well, I've done that. So let's look at what the data says. Hide my face. So as you can see over here, these are the CPI readings over one month, two month, three month, six month, one year, two years, three years, five years, and 10 years. And this is the exponent level that you need to compound to create an annualized amount. So one month obviously needs that interval to be compounded to the 12th power, two months is the sixth power, three months is the fourth power, and so forth. And also with years, you need the square root to find the annualized inflation rate over a two year inflation period, the cube root over three years, fifth root over five years, 10th root over 10 years. And these are the readings that we see for these time intervals from the bls.gov website that we were just at. And if you take an annualized number, 0.4% to the 12th power is 4.9%, 0.8% to the sixth power is this much. So this middle column is the amount of inflation per each time period specified. And if you take a standardized annual rate from each of those, in some cases multiplying them, in some cases taking a root of them, these are the numbers that we get. Now guess what? The highest number is exactly in the 12 month inflation period. All of the longer numbers, which are more valid of course, are lower. And the 10 year compound annual growth rate of US CPI inflation is only 2.6%, but even the five year is just 3.3%. All of the longer period intervals have a lower annualized inflation rate than the one year interval. But so do all of the shorter periods. If you take just the last two months, and annualize that by taking that to the sixth power or the last three months and annualize that by taking that to the fourth power, you also get much lower numbers. Therefore, if you were to crack a whip, let's say, and the elevated part of the whip that is progressing from the handle all the way to the end of the whip is considered the high point, then the one year mark is the high point, 7.8%. Not only is long-term inflation not high, proving that quantitative easing does not cause even CPI inflation, but even the shorter term windows of inflation are depicting much lower numbers, revealing that CPI inflation was in fact transitory, as the Federal Reserve said. They don't know why it's transitory, because if they did, they would not be tightening so severely, which brings up an important point. 
if we know that inflation is already abating and the highest point is only at the one year mark, then why raise rates so heavily when they know that the effect of any interest rate hike, Fed funds rate hike, takes six to nine months to work its way through the economy? They're overshooting again. They always overshoot in both directions, much like a novice day trader always overreacts too late at the extremes and ends up making everyone worse off. Except the Federal Reserve is worse because the public, the general population, faces the consequences of their ineptitude. They themselves do not. Whereas with a day trader, at least the day trader himself is losing money. But this is very revealing because only the one-year measurement is high, which is why a lot of the inflation screamers are at their peak. None of the headlines have a sophisticated enough mathematical assessment to look at annualized rates in all windows of time to tell us whether there's really a structural increase or only a temporary blip. Many people who are desperate to believe that inflation is much higher than it is also want to cherry pick the window of time they choose. They go to the one year window only when it's high, but when the one year window of time is low, which it soon will be as these shorter windows indicate to us, then those same people are nowhere to be found and they're very dishonest. So this was the quantitative portion of this video. Now we go to the second half of this video, which is going to reveal an analysis of some hostile and enumerate comments that I receive on this website and how to rebut that and deconstruct that. Because if you want to rebut people who are screaming about hyperinflation and how this is the worst thing in the world, then we will examine how to rebut and demolish their so-called arguments. Now the second half of this video is going to be more rhetorical, less quantitative. So those of you who are only interested in the quantitative data, you can feel free to go watch a different video now. But those who are interested in how to counter people who scream about inflation and assert all sorts of things for which there's no evidence, you may enjoy the second half quite a bit. So we go to that part. There's a very obnoxious commenter who shows up over here and now that I'm featuring his comments in a video, he will probably delete them, but it is going to be immortalized through this video. That is commenter Trader Z, who is anonymous, of course. It's fine to be anonymous. But look at how far off this person is in just a few lines. And it is difficult to be so wrong in so few words. So look at what the first thing he does is. Now, the tone of this channel is relatively professional, but he starts with profanities right away. Open your eyes. This guy has his head so far up his pretentious and a vulgarity. He can't see prices on almost everything are up 10 to 20 percent or more this past year. Now, this was a comment on exactly this type of video for May of 2022, where I show the same three metrics, including the two that are unriggable, the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index and the U.S. Treasury Yield. And I showed the data in a very non-falsifiable way. None of that matters to him. He couldn't understand the complexity of what was being displayed. So he says, he can't even see that prices of almost everything are up 10 to 20% or more in the past year. Wait, how is that data? How is that an independent assessment that has analytical rigor? People's home prices were up 20, 30%, but that caused their net worth to rise through home equity gains. Stock market was up a lot as well. So he is not even doing anything in terms of presenting proper data up to a professional standard of statistical rigor. Blindly trust government issued statistics. Even though the entire video is about how some things are freely traded like the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index components and the 10-year Treasury yield. So where did I ever say blindly trust government issued statistics? Most of the video is how you cannot even claim that government statistics are rigged because we will look at things that are freely traded. Will not even entertain that they can be manipulated. See, the person who either doesn't watch the video or more likely he watched it, but it was way above his head, it was too advanced for him to understand, would say something like that. CPI is 8.3%. Now this goes to the point how only the one year window matters. 10 years, which smooths out a lot of noise and is the better metric, is what he wants to ignore because that reveals his worst fear that inflation is not as high as he wants it to be because he wants to comply with the orthodoxy. Remember, weak people want to comply with authority. They can't stand nonconformists. This goes back to how prehistoric humans lived in 50,000 BC. The weak people had to suck up to the rest of the tribe that we see over here. If you believe they're rigged numbers, much higher in reality. What is this proof that it's much higher than that in reality? Nothing at all other than he just heard somewhere that inflation is high. Who gives an S, so again vulgarity, if the average tenure growth rate is 2.4%? Well, that's known as proper statistical rigor to smooth out noise. If there was ever a poster boy for self-aggrandizing academic jackass, that is this guy. Now, I'm not even a professor at a university. 
I am someone who is in the private sector and makes a lot of predictions and I absolutely face the consequences for wrong predictions. Long time viewers know about the track record of my predictions. But this person couldn't even be bothered to find out that I'm not really an actual professor. I just teach at Stanford very infrequently as a visiting instructor. Probably believed the Fed when they said inflation is transitory. Well, it's not about believing. It's about the data, in fact, confirming that that's true from what we're seeing. QE doesn't cause inflation. That's right, QE doesn't cause inflation. QE was going on for 12 years. And inflation showed up only in the last one year and for the reasons I mentioned, stoppage of oil and natural gas production. So every single sentence here is jaw-droppingly wrong. This is when you encounter someone who is effortlessly wrong about everything. Most of us could not be this wrong, even if we tried to be this wrong. We couldn't even act to play a role of what this person effortlessly manages to be. God help us if this idiot, idiot being me, is actually teaching young minds. God help us if this idiot is teaching young minds. Remember, most of the world is pushing an inflation narrative. He thinks that his inflation narrative is actually contrarian and is against the establishment. When this is the most establishment embedded non-thinker imaginable, desperate to be a conformist to the narrative, right or wrong, and desperate to punish any non-conformist. That's what's happening here. Now, if you recall in my video, I make a caricature of people like this by saying their entire narrative of inflation is based and what they heard. Their wife's boyfriend's parole officer said that the price of something rose. So that's their basis. And he provided no data to support his assertion that inflation is high other than he heard somewhere this, that, and everybody knows this, that. That's how he talks. So later on in the next video, a week later, the same commenter comes up here and he thinks he's being clever by trying to turn on the phrase, my wife's boyfriend's parole officer said, don't worry if the one-year growth rate is high. Well, he doesn't realize that he in fact confirmed that he is exactly the caricature of that type of person. And while he did a good job to quote the various numbers of one year inflation rate, I didn't think he could quote numbers accurately. I thought he'd make a decimal error. He still said 10 year treasury yield is 2.74%, which is what it was in the reading for this month. So that is low. So even the number he quoted is low, but he doesn't know what the difference is between a high number and a low number. The 10 year average is so much better to look at, bro. Everyone else is just out of your league intellectually. Now see over here, my response is polite and I provide actual data and I say the CPI is not rigged. I see you're ignoring the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index and 10-year Treasury yield, which trade freely. So my response, again, maintains a professional tone. He didn't respond because, again, he saw he was intellectually outclassed. So he went to the strategy that people like him tend to do, which is then wait for some time and then pretend that he didn't lose the prior argument and come back with more bluster unconnected to his first comment. But then we can see both comments over here. And now he goes into this whole thing, well, inflation is killing poor people and all that, but he's kind of saying that deflation would be good. And I have a video up here in the tile in the upper right-hand corner that shows deflation would be much worse. So he's just reading something based on media that he has already decided he's gonna agree with and then parrots that to say that we are all wrong, not just me, but all of you who agree here are wrong and we don't know how to look at the data. Now to say that this person is innumerate and people like him are innumerate is actually the mildest thing I could say about him. It's possible to be innumerate and still polite, but he's very rude and vulgar as well because his ego is tied up in in a need to parrot the prevailing narrative because, like I said, his hind brain is still in 50,000 BC. He can only comply with the prevailing narrative. He could never consider breaking away from that because he cannot survive without the tribe protecting him. So I respond, I'm again polite over here. Another commenter responds and says, you know, I have actually created a solution in my Atom publication of why cash should be sent directly to people. That would get around the problem of how the poorest people are not benefiting from QE, which I've always said. The poorest people do not have homes, so they don't get home equity gains. They do not have stocks, so they don't benefit from the stock market rising. All market forces are going towards cash directly to people. Now, you would think someone like this would be in favor of getting Federal Reserve cash because one of the reasons he's very bitter is he probably doesn't have any assets and people like him tend to not accumulate assets. So they are not receiving benefits of quantitative easing, at least not directly. That's why cash should be sent directly to people, especially to help people at the very bottom of the ladder. But see, this is the prevailing narrative. And the only reason I go into this much detail about these types of comments is this is what a lot of people out there think. They are very enumerate. I use that word again because they don't know how to look at the actual data. They have been convinced that QE has caused inflation. They have been convinced that inflation has been high for much longer than just one year. And it's not because of the stoppage of oil and natural gas production, but rather because of quantitative easing, even though the United States is only 25% of the world's quantitative easing. As I show everyone each month when we do 
our monetary creation update. So this is an example of the type of comments around inflation that cause a tremendous amount of misinformation to be out there. And when he sees that I have taken apart his comments in a video, he will delete both of them, but they have been immortalized in this video. But this is how people who are far below the level necessary to discuss complex subjects not only feel qualified, but then say that I'm a professor, which I'm not, and that I'm a negative influence on young minds. They couldn't be bothered to find out that I'm not some tenured faculty. I'm actually a Silicon Valley tech startup person. But anyway, this is how a Dunning-Kruger syndrome manifests, and the inflation narrative is extremely attractive to Dunning-Kruger type people because it is a seductive way to feel knowledgeable about something and to find a lot of people who agree with that narrative, even though that is false, and in doing so, they miss opportunities to make money, which is quite easy in an environment where inflation has been high, such as real estate, home equity gains, or even the gains in the stock market since 2019 while quantitative easing was going on. And that is why detailed quantitative analysis like this appeals to only a select group of people, such as most of you who are regular subscribers of this channel. Now, if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification button. Thank you very much for watching.